Suppose phi from G to K is a group homomorphism. We have to prove that if J is a subgroup of K, then phi inverse of J is a subgroup of G. So this set here, this is called the inverse image of capital J. And it's basically all of the elements in G that get mapped to J, right? So it's all the X's in G such that phi of X is actually in J. And we have to prove that it is a subgroup of G. So we have to show that one, it is non-empty, two, it is closed under the group operation, and three, that it is closed under inverses. So let's start by showing that it is in fact non-empty. So first, note that J is a subgroup of K. So the identity element in K is actually an element of J, right? And phi of the identity element in G is equal to the identity element in K. And so this is in J. And so that means that the identity element of G is an element of the inverse image. Really scary looking if, if, you, if you really focus on all of these, these giant subscripts. What does it mean to be in the inverse image? It means that phi of x is in j. x is in the inverse image if phi of x is in j. Well, phi of eg is equal to ek, which is certainly in j because j is a subgroup. And that means that eg is in the inverse image. Two, we have to show that it is closed under the group operation. So suppose we have x and y in the inverse image. So what does that mean? This means that phi of x and phi of y are both in j. Again, that's exactly what it means. Uh, for x and y to be in the inverse image. x is in this set. That means that phi of x is in j. So x and y are in this set, and that means that phi of x and phi of y are in j. We have to show that the product uh, is also in that set. So we have to show that phi of x, y is in j. So then, let's look at phi of x, y. We have to show that this is in j. If this is in j, that means that x, y is in the inverse image. Well, phi is a group homomorphism, so this is phi of x, phi of y, right? Phi of x and phi of y, and phi of x is in j, and phi of y is in j, so that this is in j, and this is because j is closed under the group operation, right? It is a subgroup, so it is closed under the group operation. So thus, we showed that phi of xy is in j. That means that xy is in the inverse image. So that shows that the inverse image of j is closed under the group operation. Three, we have to show that it's closed under inverses. So suppose we have some x in the inverse image of j. Then, what does this mean? This means that phi of x is in j. We have to show that x inverse is in the inverse image. That means we have to show that phi of x inverse is in j. So let's look at phi of x inverse, then phi of x inverse, well that's phi of x inverse, and this is certainly in j because j is closed under inverses. Phi of x is in j, and j is closed under inverses, so phi of x inverse is in j. Thus, x inverse is in the inverse image 
of j, and that shows that the inverse image is closed under inverses. So therefore, the inverse image of j is a subgroup of G, right? We showed all three things. We showed it was non-empty or contains the identity element. We did that here. We showed it was closed under the group operation. We did that here. And we showed it was closed under inverses. We did that here. I think it takes some getting used to for a lot of people when you first work with the inverse image. It's not hard, it just, it just takes some practice. I hope this helps.